everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some Dollar Tree DIYs for you. And I would say that probably 90% of the projects that we're featuring today do include all of Dollar Tree items. I do have one thing that I added that I purchased on Amazon. And then one is a thrift flip that I incorporated some Dollar Tree items into to create the project. So... Hopefully you'll enjoy those. If you are one of my long-term subscribers, you know I have a special name for you guys. I call you the original gang. Oh, jeez! And I so appreciate you guys being here. I really do. Also, if you are newer to the channel or, you know, maybe you're not quite OG status, of course, I want to say thank you to all of you. If you're brand new to the channel, maybe even checking me out for the first time, welcome. Hopefully YouTube recommended this video to you and uh, you'll want to stick around and subscribe and hang out with us. All right, let's get into those projects. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> let's get into the projects. <laughs> All right, everyone, and for project number one, we are going to take this plastic Dollar Tree mirror and we are going to turn it into an antique looking mirror. I grabbed this one in black. It does come in a variety of colors, but you could certainly pick whatever color you wanted. The black was perfect for me and for what I was going to be doing. The first thing I'm going to do is tape off the mirror itself. I'm just using some of my painter's tape there and I am literally just going to kind of pull it apart piece by piece and just cover up that mirror completely. Once that mirror is covered up, then I am going to start painting the mirror. For the mirror itself, I'm actually going to be using this Waverly ink chalk paint. Even though this is black and I'm painting it black again, I'm doing that because the Waverly antiquing wax is going to give me a very nice texture that I can kind of adhere other paint to. I'm really kind of building layers here. And also that plastic is a little shiny and I want something that has a little bit more of a matte finish, which is why I'm going with this Waverly Antiquing Wax. So once I had everything painted on the front and the back side of that mirror, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to help speed it up a little bit using my heat gun. Then I'm going to take my folk art gold paint here and I am going to start dabbing it on the mirror itself. I'm literally just going to be building layers of the gold paint with the black. And as you can see, I'm using that same sponge brush that I used to apply the black paint. And uh, really what I'm doing here is just kind of giving this an aged look, almost like this is a gold-plated antique mirror that you've had for a while that maybe was your grandmother's, and it's just going to have this really cool patina and finish to it. You're literally going to just start alternating the gold and the black back and forth until you've achieved the color that you that you really want. I think this is perfect. I think this is beautiful. It looks fantastic on the vanity. I could totally see this in a bathroom. You could use this very easily as a display. And I even thought about afterwards, I wish I would have grabbed an oversized comb and did the same treatment to it because how cute and beautiful would that be on a vanity? And for project number two, I'm going to be making a contemporary looking clock. We're going to be using some of these long Dollar Tree dowel rods. I'm also using some popsicle sticks. If you had plain ones, that's perfectly fine. I'm using the rainbow colored ones. I'm using a square wreath form and one of these round plates from this eight pack that you can pick up in the Dollar Tree section. Now for the wreath form, I am going to go ahead and just flip that over and put that face down. For the dowel rods, you see that they are just about the perfect size for the center of the wreath form. They're a little bit long. I will end up trimming those down. But um, just for, you know, for this first part, um, we're just going to glue these directly down to the wreath form. Originally, I was going to go with the longer dowel rods, but then I ended up trimming them down. And you'll, you'll kind of see why as we progress on. So the first thing I'm doing is just using some all-purpose glue from Surebonder. And it is holding that dowel rod and that uh, wreath form together perfectly. I was super super happy with the way that that hold was adhering and then for the crossbar because I don't want it to have that bump in the middle and I want this to be nice and flat I am going to take my lineman pliers here and I'm just going to snip this in half I'm doing that and then I'm going to glue it in place by just simply adding some hot glue onto the end of that dowel rod that I just cut and then also onto that wreath form itself that way everything again is nice and flat and that crisscross is going to be kind of uh 
kind of seamless across there. Hopefully that's making sense. Now, once I did get that done, it was time to go ahead and take the uh, face of the clock or what's going to support the clock mechanism, and that is that plastic plate. And then I'm just going to simply just use one of those plates. I'm going to glue it down to the center of the dowel rods, and then we are going to get ready to paint this. But before we do that, we are going to add a few other embellishments to this. Um, you'll see that I will start to cut down the popsicle sticks to get them about the right size. And then I decided to kind of cut that center bar out of the wreath form itself because um, I thought that the numbers would actually lay flat a lot better on the clock. And I'm really actually glad that I did that. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the footage. I thought it was filming when I took everything outside to spray paint it, but I, I clearly wasn't. Um, the wreath form itself, you can see it's all been spray painted in black, and that includes that plate on that center part. And then for my numbers that I made with the popsicle sticks, I spray painted those a gorgeous copper color. Now for the clock mechanism, that is a clock mechanism that I've used many, many times in some other DIYs. I literally just simply hot glue this down to the back of that clock or to the, uh, the, the plate really, which is, I'm kind of calling my clock face. And uh, it works out perfectly. It's pretty easy to remove if I have to change the batteries. Luckily, I haven't had to change the batteries. You could certainly also get a small command hook and just hang it that way if you wanted to. Um, once everything was assembled, this is what my clock looks like, and I'm super, super happy with this. It's very contemporary and modern looking. I love that copper transition with the black. And uh, again, I'm very, very happy with this one. For my next project, I've had this wooden box that was actually left over from a kind of like a cheese and meat platter thing that I removed. It came from this company, Effective. So thank you, Effective. And uh, I decided to go ahead and use this box as a remote box. I'm also going to be using one of these toy phones that I picked up from Dollar Tree. So the first thing I did was take the toy phone outside and just spray painted it black. I loved the little star detail that is on that and I thought that it would really give me a cool industrial vibe for my remote control box that I'm going to be creating that's going to sit on my coffee table to help me hide some of those things that uh, we need to be able to watch TV. Now, while that was drying, I did go back inside and I'm grabbing this pearl wrap. This is the pearl wrap that does not have the adhesive back to it. So I am going to be adding a little bit of hot glue. And what I want to do is just kind of decorate the box up a little bit. I'm going to give it this pearl wrap trim and uh, just by adding a little bit of hot glue and then going all the way around the box itself and doing this on all four sides of the box. It was pretty easy to do. It's really, really flexible. It's actually easy to cut also. Um, I do wish that I probably would have had that adhesive back pearl wrap for this instead, but uh, the roll honestly did work fine once everything was kind of hot glued into place. Now I did have a strip that was left and I thought that if I trimmed this up and did like two double rows of the pearl wrap then I could use that around the edge of the lid itself. So I am going to go ahead and do that as you can see here. I'm just kind of cutting up and uh, kind of um, making that one strip into two kind of longer strips. And then just like I did with the other pearl wrap, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some hot glue and just adhere this to the lid itself. Once everything was dry with the hot glue, I then took it outside and spray painted it this really cool steel color. I wanted something that was going to be, again, super industrial. And uh, when it was all done, I loved the way it looked, but I did want to go ahead and age it just a little bit. So I'm going to take some black chalk paint. This is that ink Waverly chalk paint that I was using in the previous project. And uh, I'm just going to take my brush that had some leftover paint on it. And I am just going to kind of dry brush this. I did end up adding a little bit of paint to the brush itself and just kind of working it around on all of that pearl wrap just to kind of give it that aged kind of metal look. And then I am going to go ahead and just add some of that to the sides and to the top. 
that way it really kind of dulls out that chrome and that uh, kind of uh, me metallic look and really gives it this cool aged look. Again, super, super happy with this one. Love the versatility of this box. I can put tchotchkes and knickknacks and lighters for my candles or I could put TV remotes in it. It has a lot of really cool versatility. And uh, I love the way that toy phone works as a handle on the top of that box. And for my last project, I'm going to take one of these clear champagne buckets that you can pick up in the party section at Dollar Tree. I really love this, and I think that it's super versatile. I also had some of this twine. This particular twine bundle I picked up on Amazon, but you could use regular twine that you could find at Dollar Tree or even on Amazon. I have a link in my description box below where you can go and find some of this uh, twine if you wanted to go ahead and get something that was a little sturdier. For the champagne bucket, I'm going to go ahead and just take this outside and I am going to spray paint this a matte flat black. It is my signature color of the year. I seem to like this color a lot and use it often in a lot of my DIYs. Now, I think that you could very, very easily paint this white or red or navy blue or any kind of color you wanted to and do the same exact treatment that I'm doing, going to be doing with the twine, which you will see in just a minute. Now, when everything is dry, I did take this inside. And for the twine, I'm just going to go ahead and cut an extremely generous amount of twine off of the spool itself. I'm going to start with just kind of gluing it down on the back side and then literally just wrapping those handles all the way around on both sides until you have this very beautiful finished piece. Now for my particular need, I wanted something to put my K-cups in for my coffee maker. And this fits really cool within the industrial vibe that my kitchen has going on. And it is the perfect vessel for my K-cups. Now you could very easily use this for your bathroom. You could put plants in it. I think that there's a lot of versatility with this and I absolutely love the way this turned out. I think that this is probably one of my favorites. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed those projects. If you did, please give me a like or a thumbs up or whatever you call it. And also feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite project was. Also be sure to follow me on all the social medias. I'm expanding. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Twitter. And of course, Instagram and YouTube. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Oh my God, my allergies. Oh. Oh, my ears, my sinuses, not dying. I just have allergies. In five, four, three, one. Oh, spitting and slobbery. Before we get into the DIYs, I wanted to absolutely blah, 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 blah.